Hey Dragon Slayers! Today's video is about MSG, petrochemicals, pesticides, and their connection to insulin resistance. So the other common route of exposure to harmful substances is through the mouth. Even the most diligent individuals consume harmful molecules on a daily basis, even without knowing it, some of which are known to cause insulin resistance. We'll discuss the role of diet in greater detail later, but before we get to that, however, it's worth mentioning some specific ingredients and ingested substances that have been particularly tied to insulin resistance. Let's examine monosodium glucolamate, also known as MSG. It is still used widely due to its flavor-enhancing attributes, yet it is widely known to be harmful to health which is why various restaurants and products are okay, are quick to advertise their food as MSG free. Remarkably, MSG was one of the earliest used methods of inducing obesity in lab animals. Nonetheless, to say MSG increases insulin, giving people an oral load, taking in a large amount in a short amount of time, of MSG increases the insulin response to the glucose load. And every one gram of MSG, a daily level often reached throughout Asia, correlates with a 14% increased risk of developing insulin resistance. There are trace levels of MSG naturally in food, such as certain fruits, vegetables, but those, those are negligible. So I just wanted to add a quick side note here you know, this is all straight from Dr. Benjamin Beekman's research, and I don't want to demonize MSG. I know that there is a long history there, and I'm very aware of that, and, and I, I mean, I eat it, right? Like, I don't cook with it at home, but anytime I go out to an Asian restaurant, like, you're getting a ton of MSG, more than likely. I have never gotten headaches. I've never gotten any sort of ill side effects, right? So... Just be aware of that I'm a strong believer of everything in moderation. So yeah, it's probably not a good idea if you're eating spoonfuls of it daily. But if you eat out, like I eat out once a week, typically, up at the most twice a week. And, you know, all it's in packaged foods, but it's far from the worst thing that's in the food. So just, just putting that out there as a side note. I don't want to demonize it because I think that particularly in Western culture, MSG has been unfairly demonized. And I personally don't think that it is, is as harmful to health as a lot of Western cultures believe that it is. So that's my opinion. Do your own research. Continuing, let's look at petrochemicals, which are simply chemicals that are produced from petroleum. The number of petrochemicals is massive, encompassing thousands of commonly used items. These aren't rare either. Virtually every person on earth uses them every day. Petrochemicals are found in items we wear, lotions we apply, and yes, even the foods we eat and drink. Most are likely inert, but at least some effect to our health, and even appear to influence insulin sensitivity. The main petrochemical that has been explored as a cause of insulin resistance is biphenol A, which is also known as BPA. BPA is everywhere. It's found in soft plastic water bottles and jugs, baby bottles, plastic toys, and the lining of canned foods. In the U.S., roughly 90% of the population, 95% the population has demonstrable BPA levels in the blood. In animals, BPA exposure directly increases insulin resistance and insulin levels in the blood. In humans, the correlation has been robust and consistent. Those with higher blood and urine BPA levels are those more likely to have insulin resistance. Just how BPA may be causing insulin resistance is not yet fully clear. However, it might be to, due to its ability to imitate estrogens, which with chronic elevated levels of exposure can induce insulin resistance. 
Lastly, pesticides defines a broad classification of chemicals used to deter insects. The use of pesticides and our subsequent exposure are both remarkable. The world uses billions of pounds annually. The U.S. uses less than most countries, strangely enough. <laughs> Nevertheless, like petrochemicals, pesticides are everywhere. Organochlorine pesticides, such as DDT, were once the most common type, although rare in recent decades. Their effects still linger. Um, organochlorine exposure has been shown to highly predict insulin resistance. One study, which followed its participants from the mid-80s to the mid-2000s, found that those with the highest organochlorine levels in their blood were the most likely to develop insulin resistance. Shorter-term studies have since corroborated these findings. BPA and organochlorines are alike in how they linger. Our bodies have a remarkable ability to retain these toxins. They're gifts that just keep on giving. Once we've been exposed, our body will often store these harmful foreign molecules in our fat tissues. Someone already carrying more fat thus has a greater capacity to store these toxins. And visceral fat is much more likely to accumulate these toxins, potentially up to 10 times more than that of subcutaneous fat. So that's what I have for you guys today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember that together, you and I will slay the dreaded diabetes dragon.